Hi, I'm at Picacho Peak in Arizona. Doing some plein air painting. Plein air means setting up and painting outdoors in real life, live and in person. There's an energy to plein air painting that's, uh, it's, it's amazing. There's just nothing like it. Uh, studio painting has its beauty and place and painting outdoors definitely has a different kind of energy that's just, yeah. Anyway, here's some of the scenery you can see behind me. Here's my setup. I'll show you this in detail. There's my shade buddy. This is the Arizona desert behind me. All right, hope you enjoy this. If you have any questions, let me know. Leave your comments down below. Bye. All right, so here's the big setup. I call this my ready paint go setup. We're in the process of producing something like this for people to use. It's a real basic setup. It's so fun. I can be painting while people are still getting their drawing boards out. Um, anyway, drawing is a very important skill and it's time well spent. So right now I'm just looking at the vista in front of me, the scene of Picacho Peak. And I'm going to put some nice light pencil lines down and get ready to do the first wash. So I get my palette out and just a little pre-moistening of the paper. And really, you know, the first wash, you don't want to paint the painting all at once. The first wash is really just going to be about setting light and giving a mood. And this particular morning, the sunrise is just gorgeous. And those colors actually lived in the sky there. And so I'm laying in some cerulean blue and a little bit of cobalt in the sky with some rose matter genuine for the the mauve kind of color and then some just warm browns for the ground and then let it dry completely dry dry before I go on to the next step. Now the first part I want to do is there's some real distant mountains and I'm actually gonna take care to just put those in nice and soft it lends so much credibility to have those mountains so far away and of course if you want to make distance you use blue. And now I'm going to go in and start laying in the shape and the, the structure, the bones of the peak. And you can't really see it but I use the side of my brush quite a bit. I rarely use just the very tip. And here just with the foliage, again the side of the brush, laying it in. Uh, 
taking some paint and splattering it a little bit, just throwing some drops on there. You want to try to get a very random effect because nature is random. Now as I get to the foreground, notice I left a patch of white. I want to lead the viewer into the painting. And then I'm going to come in with some darks. I'm using burnt umber uh, and some burnt sienna. And here I've just picked up a little bit of black on my brush and I'm flicking it kind of to make splatters. And those will be the rocks and the stones and the textures. And then by scraping my brush over them, once that paint dries a little bit, it leaves just a little bit of a shadow. And speaking of shadows, I'm going in here, some little darks, and starting to create some textures. I want this foliage to start um, coming forward some of it and some of it going back. So I'm going to do lighter and darker greens. And there I'm splattering. You see, I'm just throwing some green, dark green in. And that'll give the, the foliage some depth. A little dab of a tissue. And then uh, using the brush, I shape those darker spots. Uh, it's kind of a little bit of a timing thing too, though. You have to let the pigment settle a little bit. And I know it's kind of hard to get when you're watching this sped up like this. But uh, YouTube has a player, the player that you're watching this on, and it has a setting control down in the right corner. Looks like a little gear. If you click on that setting control, you can slow the speed of this video down if you'd like to watch it in more real time. Here, so I put in some details, some cactus, and uh, you know I've heard it said that great painters insinuate, don't state. So you don't want to paint a cactus uh, like Gumby. I'm just going to lay it in very shadowy, uh, and it tricks the eye into seeing like a cactus on a hot day. I'm trying to push part of the peak back and bring part of it forward, so those shadows along the top help to separate the mountains a little bit and here I'm going in with actual shadows to give the painting some depth just little tweaks and touches here and there a little bit more dark this is really fun to paint it was quite cool it was first thing in the morning uh, but what a joy I'd love to paint outside I hope this inspires you to try it if you have any questions please let me know I'll be happy to answer them for you. All right, let's look around Tucson a little bit and explore some of the sights and some of the sounds and see some of the amazing places here. I'll be in Tucson for a couple of weeks and uh, stay tuned next week too. We'll see some more places and we're gonna go up to Mount Lemmon and do some painting. But for now, just enjoy the sights and sounds of Tucson, Arizona. Ah, be careful what you ask for. Thank you. 
Well, I hope you have a good time. If you have any questions, please let me know. My email is ward at artofward.com, and you can always get a hold of me there. Uh, special shout out to our friend Jean Haynes. She deserves all the love we can send her. And take care of Cheap Joe's. They're a great little family-owned business. And yeah, I guess I'll see you guys next week. Take care. Bye. Ha, <laughs> ha.